Okay, we're in Civil 3D, and the first time you uh, get into Civil 3D, you're going to have to set some settings that we use a lot in the office. These are some of the suggestions and some of the critical ones that uh, we will need to operate the software in the manner that we're used to here. So the first one's going to be loading the menu bar. And you can see a menu bar up top, but the menu system here is for the ribbon. So this is a different menu bar, and now we have two menu bars here. This one's for the ribbon. This one is for the program itself, and some of the commands in here are not readily available in the ribbon bar, uh, or they're hidden too far inside of it, and vice versa. So you're going you're gonna to need both of these, in my opinion, to, uh, to efficiently use the software. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in config or options, either way. We're going to go to the first tab up at the top, and we're going to look at the support file search path. And in order to use some of the uh, custom tools that I've written in Lisp, we need to load s colon CAD tools backslash Lisp. And you do that by clicking in here, hitting add, and then browse, and then locating this on, your, on the network. Uh, the rest of these are basically the standard default values. This does not have to be at the top. I just moved it to the top um, uh, to be readily available to me. Then um, I want to go down to trusted locations, add that same directory to it. Otherwise, every time you start Civil 3D or, or start a command, a macro in Civil 3D, it's going to tell you that it's not a trusted location and do you want to add it. If you want to get rid of that, that nag screen, once you add it in here, uh, you won't see that. Uh, we'll continue down. We'll get to the printer support file path. And the one we want to make sure and change here is this one. We want to, we can leave the, the, by default, this is the one that comes in. You can leave that in if you want to and just add this path here, S CAD tools plot styles. This is where we keep our default plot styles file for the office that complies with our standards. And if there are uh, uh, edits to be made through maintenance, then I only have to update that one file. And the next time somebody gets into it, they automatically get uh, the newest version. So we need to make sure that that's been added. We're going to go to the templates settings or to template settings. And we're going to look at the location at which it pulls new templates from. And again, we keep everything in S CAD tools, and we go to the underscore civil 3D prototype drawing directory. And from then on, that's the directory that it's going to pull from when we type in new or, or whatever the case is. Um, we go down to the third one, default template file name for Q new. We go to that same directory that's specified up here, and we specify the 2022 Capital Project Services prototype DWT file. We're in 2022 at the moment, so that's the file that we would use. If we went to 2024, we would create another one for 2024 or 2025, the newest version, and then that would be the, 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 the file that we would be pulling from. And then we do the same thing for the default template for sheet creation. We pull from that same location. The rest of these are not really uh, necessarily having to be changed. I usually keep with the defaults of that. I'm going to go to the next tab, open and save. I usually make sure that this is zero. That way it does a full save. This by default, the automatic save minutes between saves is 10 minutes. Um, it, it's going to interrupt you a little bit every time it saves. So I just make it to 60. So mine saves every 60 minutes by default. I make sure that the file open and application menu number of recent used files shows nine. I also make sure that the display full path in title is selected. It can be helpful. You'll see DWG or drawing one DWG. Once I save that to a particular location, it'll show the entire path of that file. We'll continue on plot and publish. By default, I always plot to the DWG to PDF file uh, for all my plots. And then if I want a hard copy, then I print out of the PDF. That way I can see exactly what I'm 
I'm plotting or printing. Uh, I make sure that the publishing checkbox is, pub is uh, checked for background processes only. The rest of these are uh, default settings. I'm going to go to the next tab. Everything here, for the most part, is, is uh, again, uh, uh, default settings. Nothing to change there. I'm going to go to the user preferences. This one, this right-click customization, you're going to have to change this for the prog program to work correctly. We want, for the first choice, repeat last command. For the edit mode, you want shortcut menu. And for the command mode, you want enter. That will operate uh, correctly and like the old AutoCAD was for, you know, ever since its inception into Windows. I'll say apply that. There's really uh, nothing else to change here. These are defaults. We'll go to the drafting. I find that the aperture, auto snap aperture box is handy to have shown. Um, and uh, uh, the rest of these are for the most part defaults. 3D modeling, I really don't show change much of anything here. I do deselect both of the view cube displays. I don't really care to have those on for most of my work. They kind of get in the way. We'll go over to selection. I, I like to show grips within blocks. Uh, and I usually change this to 1,000. It By default, it's 100. That works best for me. Um, you know, it may work a little different for you. I don't, there's nothing to change in profiles, and and this is program profiles, not roadway profiles, by the way. AEC editor, um, the only thing to deselect is the solution tips. Make sure that both of these are turned off. Uh, there's some nag screens that, that don't really paint, pertain to anything on that, uh, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, we're not we're not being interrupted as we go through this. One last thing on the display. Again, it's a personal preference. This crosshair size, this is a percentage of the screen. And I want my cursor to, to always go completely across the screen and, and from top to bottom. So I make it at 100%. If I make it to 10%, you can see that the cursor is just a small x. And if I make it smaller than that, under display, let's say 2% or something like that, you'll see that those cursors get smaller and smaller. I use the cursors now and again to line things up. So it, it makes it very handy, in my opinion, to have these at, uh, you know, at least 90, and I just set mine to 100%. So the cursor continues all the way across the screen. Basically, that's the setup for options. Uh, the last thing to set up is going to be some of these uh, button bars that we, we're not showing here. And so you, if you right click here, you don't, you don't get what you think you're going to get. So if you go down to this lighter gray color right here and you right click, then you get to this pop-up menu, AutoCAD. And what I generally do is I have uh, standard selected and it pops up right here then then once once the first one pops in then you'll notice that it has that same lighter gray color for the ribbon bar and i can right click in that one or right click in this one either way then i go back to here and i say um, uh, layers and then i go back to autocad and i say um, uh, parameters or pro i'm sorry properties and then the last one I like to load up is Layers 2. And so Layers 2 comes in on this side, or it could be it could come in as a floating. And again, these are these are personal preferences, but these seem to work best for me. And so if if I'm having to help you, you may want to have them in the same basic location as I have them since you're starting out. That way, if you need help, I know right where to tell you, you know, where to where to go to select certain objects. Now this setup, oh, there's one last one, which I like to have a draw button over here. So I can right click again in the light gray, go to AutoCAD and go to draw. And it pops in right here. And those are some quick tools. If 
we're under the civil 3d workspace and if i was to choose another workspace right now or even civil 3d it's going to overwrite everything that i've done here on the screen with what's saved in the civil 3d so what i need to do is save current as and then give it your name i'm going to call this training And when I say save here, and if I choose Civil 3D, it reverts back and all my, all my changes are gone. But if I ever want to get them back, I go back to training and it replaces all those changes. So make sure that once you're done with all your settings, you save those.